Здравствуйте, welcome back to Russian Through Poems and Paintings. Today is day 122, and our topic today is advanced prepositions. Uh, so basically, this is just a vocabulary lesson, right? There's not really a whole lot of grammar here to speak of. Uh, we just want to learn some uh, more advanced prepositions. And, you know, of course, we know a lot of prepositions already, uh, but just some very basic meanings, a lot of which are spatial, right? So like in, um, above, below, behind, in front of, right? And then other ones like about, right? So some pretty basic prepositions. And we know in terms of the grammar that the only thing really to know about them is what case they take, right? So for example, or, meaning about, is followed by the prepositional case, right? So same thing today. We're just learning new prepositions, learning what, what they mean, what case they take, and that's really... Um, about all there is to say uh, about them. Uh, so let's see, let's start with uh, prepositions that take the dative, right? So we're just grouping these new ones by by the case they take. So we have a few with the dative. Blagadaria, uh, which means thanks to. Vapriki, which means despite or in defiance of. And sujipo, right, judging by. Now, some of these are kind of, not, they're not really standalone prepositions. They're more like, uh, you know, this one is kind of a phrase that ends in a preposition, poor, which we've actually had already, and we know that it takes the um, dative, right? So, uh, we have some quick examples here. Благодаря нашему профессору мы уже хорошо знаем грамматику. Right, thanks to our professor, we already know grammar. Иван Карамазов говорит, что жить надо уметь и вопреки логике. Yeah, a famous quote from Ivan Karamazov and Dostoevsky's uh, The Brothers Karamazov. He says that one must know how to live even in defiance of logic. И вопреки логике. Судя по его одежде, он, наверное, очень богатый. Judging by his clothes, he's probably very rich. Okay, so again, not not a really not not a lot of commentary we can give here. Just learning some new prepositions. Let's fill in some blanks. Thanks to my parents, I have a fast car. Благодаря моим родителям у меня быстрая машина. By the way, both the forms благодаря and судья are uh, in terms of where they come from. They're verbal adverbs. So uh, we'll actually learn how these were formed uh, later in this chapter. Uh, but we should note that here, used as prepositions, you wouldn't normally really think of them as coming from a verb. Uh, you could, but nowadays they're basically just standalone prepositions. Like, благодаря, we'd say, yeah, that's a preposition that's followed by the um, dative, but it's actually from the verb благодарить, which means to give thanks, to thank someone. Okay, so uh, number two, I drive fast despite their warnings. Я быстро езжу. Uh, вопреки их предупреждениям. Okay, вопреки, and then we get предупреждением in the dative plural. Number three, judging by what they say, I'm a bad driver. Судьи потому, что они говорят, я плохой водитель. And by the way, there's an example of that that which construction, то что, right? Judging by that which they say, judging by what they say, I'm a bad driver. Okay, uh, one little aside here is the distributive use of pull. We don't see this a whole lot. It's not necessarily very common, but let's just make a note of it in case you hear it uh, some at some point, right? Now, remember that pull generally means along a path or around a space or somehow by way of or via, right? So in its most sort of con concrete usage, which we've had for a very long time now, it means sort of movement through a space or along a path. Right? We strolled along the embankment. We strolled around downtown, right? Through the center of town. Right? We watched the game via television, we could say, right? By means of television. Okay, so we, we've seen those uses already. Now, the new one today is uh, a distributive usage. So it means something like English, each or a piece, right? Uh, so, for example, example, Мальчик дал каждому учителю по яблоку or по пять яблок. Okay, so if we follow the pool with the, with the noun, we get that in the dative, of course. So he gave the teacher, each teacher, one apple, right? He gave to every teacher... Uh, an apple apiece, we could say, po yabloku. Now, if we follow po with a number, then somewhat unusually, the number does not decline, right? So uh, we'll talk more about how numbers decline in book four, I believe. 
Uh, but anyway, here there's there's no trick to this, right? Poipiat Yablok, he gave them five apples each. Okay, one question you may hear like at a market especially, it's a little bit kind of colloquial, right? Pachomovas agursli, right? How much are your pickles? And then depending on what you're asking about, you get a price per unit or a price per kilogram or whatever, right? Again, distrib distributive uh, usage of poor. But 200 rubles kilogram, right? 200 rubles per kilogram, right? Each kilogram is 200 rubles a piece. Okay, let's uh, let's use some examples with poor. We love to stroll along Nevsky Prospect. Мы любим гулять по Nevskomu Prospectu. Today we strolled around the summer garden. Okay, there's a, a big open space. We're strolling through it or around it. Сегодня мы гуляли по летнему саду. Number three, let's get in touch by email. Давай спишемся по электронной почте. Right? Uh, again, you could think of that maybe as via, right? This, uh, the sense of a route or a means, right? Uh, by email, via email. Uh, Chitiria, mom gave the kids one piece of candy each. Okay, Dis distribution. Mama dala dietiam po confietkia. Right there, we're following it up with the noun and the dative. Okay, this question word number five. Again, kind of a peculiar uh, thing. Uh, not really heard much in formal Russian. Right, we would use some variant of skorka, right? Skorka, how much? Skorka stoet, for example. Okay, but anyway, pachumu vas arbuzi. How much are your watermelon a piece, right? What are the what are the watermelon going for? A hundred rubles a piece. Pasto ruble, right? Again, no need to decline the store here. And you may throw in stuka. That's a very useful word if you're shopping at a at a market where you have to ask for stuff. Stuka basically just means a unit, right? So a piece, a unit of whatever you're talking about. In this case it would be a single watermelon, right? The watermelon are pasto ruble stuka. Okay, what about advanced uh, prepositions with the accusative, right? Well, we have four here. Chiris, which we know already. Nazat, which is actually a post position, we could say, and we've had that already. So we're just reviewing those. Spustia is also a post position, right? So it, Nazat and spustia come after the word they go with, which is quite unusual in Russian. And then finally, again, kind of a phrase, nismatria na regardless of or despite, literally not looking at, nismatria uh, na. Again, two of these forms, pustia and nismatria, they're actually verbal adverbs. Uh, so more on that uh, very soon. So, через, я приехал в Россию на два месяца, через неделю я поеду домой. Right, in a week from now, I'm going home. Я приехал в Россию неделю назад, я уже привыкла к жизни здесь. Okay, I arrived in Russia a week ago. And again, note how the nazat is coming after the noun and the accusative there. Right, her husband died in the war five years later. Again, here the spustia is coming at the end after the noun. Finally, Right, despite all the difficulties, literally not looking at all the difficulties, she's glad she moved to Moscow. Okay, let's fill in a few blanks. We arrived a month ago. Мы приехали месяц назад. Месяц назад. In a month we'll go home. Okay, in a month from now, через месяц мы поедем домой. Да, через месяц поедем домой. Two, despite the bad weather, we set out for the dacha. Uh, несмотря на плохую погоду, мы поехали на дачу. Three, I'll buy the car regardless of price. Again, literally not looking at the price. I don't care about the price. Я куплю машину, несмотря на цену. Uh, number four, a year later we decided to sell the house. Год спустя мы решили продать дом. Right, год спустя. Again, there the спустя comes at the end. Okay, let's look at a quick painting here. Sridi Sridi Voln is a big one of these big uh, nautical canvases by Ivazovsky, who was known for painting the ocean and ships and things like that. Uh, Sridi Voln amidst the waves, in the middle of the waves. Okay, and we see we have quite a few advanced prepositions with the genitive. The genitive is the most common 
uh, case used after uh, preposition. So there are a lot of them. We could give more, but here are some important ones. Is, uh, okay, that's a compound preposition, actually. Uh, it means literally out from behind, uh, but in a more abstract sense or figurative sense, right, due to something negative, right? Um, Radi, for the sake of, в течение, in the course of, or over the course of, насчет, or по поводу, meaning regarding, concerning, right, so kind of a fancier way to say about, вокруг, meaning around, среди, among, or amidst, and в место, in the place of, literally, instead of. Um, finally, we have two others uh, that are often confused, виду, means in light of, or literally inside of. And имеет виду, again, kind of a phrasal verb, really, to keep in mind, right? And note that there's a difference in spelling there, um, but obviously the, the, the terms are related, but the, they are different, and uh, people ought to confuse the spelling. Okay, so let's read through the examples. Из-за высоких цен мы не могли купить квартиру в центре города due to high prices. Okay, and watch for all the genitive endings after these uh, prepositions. Он делал бы все ради жены и детей. He would do everything or anything for the sake of. Ради. Режиссер снимал этот фильм в течение пяти лет. He shot the film imperfective verb over the course of five years. Right, or we could say he spent five years uh, filming, uh, shooting the film. У журналистов было много вопросов к президенту насчет экономики, right, concerning the economy. Now, of course, we could say об экономике, but this is meaning about the economy. This is a little bit fancier way of saying pretty much the same thing. Насчет plus genitive. Фанаты, которые не достали билеты, стояли вокруг стадиона. They were standing around the stadium. A krug, by the way, means a circle. So vakrug, I guess you could, we could think of as meaning literally in a circle, right? And so again, a lot of these more advanced prepositions are really, um, they really began life as a prepositional phrase or as some uh, verbal adjective or adverb, excuse me, or something like that. And now they've, over time, they've come to be just thought of as prepositions. Uh, среди моих друзей есть много иностранцев. Among my friends, there are many foreigners. Профессор решил читать Толстого вместо Достоевского. And also вместо, right? Literally in the place, in the place of, instead of, uh, whatever. Толстого вместо Достоевского. Finally, these two that may be confused. Ввиду экономических обстоятельств, банк решил не открыть новый филиал. Right, in light of economic circumstances, uh, genitive plural there. Что ты имеешь в виду? Объясни. Right, what do you have in mind? What do you mean? Надо иметь в виду, что билеты дорогие. Right, one must keep in mind uh, that the tickets are expensive. Okay, one topic we'll have to watch for, especially as we, we begin reading, uh, right, uh, you know, what happens if we want to follow up one of these prepositions, not with simply a noun, but with a verb, uh, you know, with, with some activity that's expressed using a verb? Uh, well, the first example we'll see today is is somewhat uh, peculiar, right? We say, вместо того, чтобы, right? So that's kind of a, we could kind of learn that as a kind of stock expression, right? вместо того, чтобы. But we already get some idea here of what we'll see uh, happening generally, right? Uh, think of think about why this is an issue, right? If we want to follow a preposition with a verb, well, a verb doesn't have case, right? So if we say, well, вместо requires the genitive, well, how are we going to put a verb into the genitive, um, right? So basically what we need is some little uh, something or other just kind of take the place of the verb or precede the verb and indicate case. Uh, and we see that that role is generally going to be played by to, right? To, which we've been practicing a bit lately, right, in yesterday's lesson, right? Uh, so we say, вместо того, чтобы пить чай, она пила кофе, right? Now compare that to, она пила, она пила кофе вместо чая, right? Um, there we're, we're following вместо simply with a noun, so that's easy, right? We just put чай into the genitive. But if we want to say, instead of drinking tea, we have to use this little construction, вместо того, чтобы пить чай, она пила кофе, right? 
Uh, okay, so anyway, let, more on that uh, topic here in a moment. Let's just fill in some blanks. Let's take a trip around the world. Давайте поедем вокруг света. Вокруг света. Again, genitive endings everywhere here. The match was canceled due to rain. Футбольный матч отменился из-за дождя. Из-за дождя. I'm eating a salad instead of cake. Сегодня я ем салат вместо торта. Четыре. The president spoke concerning taxes. Here, here in the plural, right? Налоги. Masculine plural. Президент говорил насчет налогов. Налогов. Take off your coat for God's sake. Сними пальто ради Бога. Шесть. This organization works for the sake of peace. Эта организация работает ради мира. Ради мира. Семь. There are many students among the crowd. Было много студентов среди толпы. Среди толпы. Восемь. Keep in mind. Имей в виду. Write and watch the spelling on that. Имей в виду, что бар закрывается в час ночи. Or plural, right, would be имейте, right? Hey, everyone, keep in mind. Имейте в виду. Okay, девять. Okay, now here, instead of going to Russia, so we've got an activity, a verb, not simply a noun. So we need to use the construction of вместо того, чтобы поехать в Россию. Right, вместо того, чтобы поехать в Россию, мы остались дома. Okay, let's um, look at a few other prepositions. Uh, I think we've seen all of these already. And again, look at how we add verbs after them, right? Again, we here, now again, what we just saw with miesta was somewhat peculiar, where we got shtobe. Typically, we'll simply use to shto, right? That to shto construction, uh, that which, or the fact that, right, that we uh, introduced yesterday, right? So again, the to is showing the case required by the preposition, and then we just have a shto clause with the verb that's uh, following it, right? Благодаря тому, что мы рано встали, мы успели сделать все. Right, so thanks to the fact that we got up early. And again, you see how often the to что can translate nicely into English using the fact that. Судя по тому, что он говорит, он действительно невиновен. Right, judging by what he says. Okay, there, the to что works out nicely with that which, right, that which. Uh, несмотря на то, что мы друзья, я не могу ему в этом помочь. Uh, right, despite the fact that we're friends, I can't help him in this matter. Now there we don't have a verb because the yeast is understood, right? So we have a, a full clause there, right? Despite the fact that we are friends, but here we, we drop the verb in Russian. Из-за того, что у нас не было теплой одежды, мы почти замерзли. Right, due to the fact that we didn't have warm clothes, we almost froze to death. Again, to что, the fact that, is a того. The того is showing us the genitive after is za. Okay, let's see. Let's do a couple of examples. Despite what they say, they'll probably help us. Uh, okay, несмотря uh, на, right, that's going to take accusative. So несмотря на то что, and now we just need our verb, right? They say, so present tense. Несмотря на то, что они говорят, они нам, наверное, помогут. Два, due to the fact that we arrived by air late, okay, or our flight arrived late. Uh, so, due to, okay, and this is also unfortunate, right? So, is, uh, is often going to refer to some negative circumstance. Из-за того, что мы прилетели поздно, мы не успели на конференцию вовремя, right? Из-за того, что мы прилетели поздно. Let's see, what about prepositions with the instrumental? Well, there's really only one, and I think we may have seen it already. Uh, but if we think back to more basic prepositions, we have uh, sa, meaning with, and then these four uh, directions, right, uh, positions. Nad, pod, pirid, za. Nad is above, pod, below, beneath, za, behind, and pirid in front of, right? Those all take the instrumental when we're talking about где, right? Position. And now we can add another one, just in case we haven't seen it already, между, which also takes the instrumental, and it would translate as between, if we're talking about two things, or among, if we're talking about many things. And by the way, it kind of, in that sense, is the same as среди, right? Which we already learned today. Между музеями каналом есть парк. Между деревьями была дача. 
Okay, so instrumental with miejdu. Okay, a few more conjunctions. Okay, so these aren't uh, prepositions, but they, you know, they, they kind of fall under this larger topic of just uh, subordinate clauses, right? And uh, again, all of this is quite important as we're getting into more advanced Russian, as we start reading Russian. So here are four very simple uh, conjunctions that, right, could begin a, uh, actually only three of these are conjunctions, more on that here in a moment, but they could uh, begin a subordinate clause, right? Uh, so the first one, takšto, this is a very common mistake. You might want to circle this. Uh, what if we're translating a sentence like, I don't have time today, so I can't help you. What students will often write is simply tak, right? Because, of course, we know that tak can mean so. We just reviewed it yesterday, right? So tak can indeed mean so, but it's not. it can't be used like the English so as a conjunction, right? It can't serve as a conjunction in Russian, right? So the form you need is takšto, takšto. Right, so um, otherwise very simple to use, right? У меня сегодня нет времени, так что я не могу тебе помочь, right? Just throw in the так что, complete your clause, and you have a, a, a result clause, right? Нам не нужна машина, так как мы можем сюда добираться пешком. We don't need a car, since we can get everywhere on foot. Okay, so again, very easy, nothing really special about the grammar. Так как means since. Хотя, very common, means although. Again, as a conjunction, right? Хотя, он вообще очень умный, он плохо понимает этот вопрос. Okay, now this fourth one is not really a, it's not a conjunction, but since it looks a lot like хотя, obviously, I thought I'd throw it in here. It simply means at least, right? Also very common. Я хочу поехать в Россию хотя бы на три месяца, right? For at least three months, хотя бы. Uh, by the way, хотя is, uh, began life as a verbal adverb from хотеть, right? So it literally means something like wanting. Um, okay, so um, anyway, we'll we'll have a better idea of what that means here, uh, actually starting in tomorrow's lesson when we learn verbal adverbs. Okay, let's fill in a few blanks. I'm busy, so I can't come tonight. Я занята, так что я не могу прийти сегодня. Again, that's so, look how it's, it's acting in English as a conjunction, so we can't use talk right remember we would use talk and if we said something like that's so nice that's so good or something right but not as a if we use a conjunction it's got to be talk since it's already late let's go home three i don't like this restaurant although the food is tasty Okay, and finally, at least, this is something a little different, not a conjunction, but let's practice it anyway. Давай закажем хотя бы закуски какие-нибудь. Right? Хотя бы, at least, let's order some snacks. Okay, so that does it for um, these first two lessons, which are kind of uh, introductions, right? Kind of lists of new vocabulary, some of which we've had, some of which is new. Uh, a lot of it could be called somewhat more advanced, right? As we move into kind of intermediate grammar here, and uh, also as we begin reading Russian, all of this stuff is really important. Now, speaking of reading Russian, tomorrow's lesson will begin uh, three, four, or even five, I don't remember, uh, multiple uh, lessons covering the topic of de-verbals, right? Starting with verbal adverbs and verbal adjectives and verbal nouns. So these are words derived from verbs. And as I may have mentioned already, this is really the last big missing piece of the puzzle in terms of major grammatical forms uh, and they're especially important for reading Russian, for formal literary Russian. Uh, so once we add these to our repertoire, we'll be able to um, really handle almost anything Russian can throw at us, right? In the sense that we've seen all the major forms, right? So, uh, you know, for, from this point on, uh, there won't be a whole lot of new grammar to cover. Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be shifting gears in book four uh, to talking more about word formation and uh, just kind of building vocabulary, right? But there, there won't be a whole lot of, of new grammar aside from just some very specialized topics uh, that we, we haven't quite looked at yet. But this will, again, complete our survey of the major forms of, of Russian right nouns. We've learned all the cases. We've learned about all different types of nouns. And um, now uh, de-verbals that will round off our coverage of all forms of Russian verbs. Okay, anyway, until then, uh, до свидания.